In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm the gate gatekeeper of this particular program, known here on YouTube, Daily Motion, Vimeo, MySpace. And make sure that you uh, send me a friend request on Facebook. Just do a search, Angel Snuffin' Up 7, under Sheshore Tenobeta. I am, with no doubt, the mighty, 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 uh, Angel Snuffin' Up 7 your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I would like to first send a few shouts to a few of my brothers and sisters in struggle. I would like to uh, say peace and respect you to my brother, Assistant and Minister of Action, Brother Andre Deadman 69, Brother Harvey Superboy, Brother Randy Ryder of the Keeping It Real Law Project, Brother David Brayboy, my most beloved sister, sisters, plural. Sister Fanadia and Sister Brenda from Virginia. <laughs> brother Michael 13X. My brother Reuben H. Okay, brother. Brother Reuben, I'm giving you a shout out. Okay. Brother Reuben, man. This brother, along with Brother Andre, these two men together, they are fire. When this work really gets to going, oh man, Woo, look out, brother Leo Leo one, and my brother King Noble, black supremacy. I would like to say thank all of you for being a friend of brother Talik and this internet ministry. Hopefully, with the work that we are planning on doing in the near future, it will be more than just an internet ministry, but an internet movement with the potential to shake the foundation of the black community like we've never been shaken before. And that's what we need in order to awaken people they must be shaken. They must be given an alarm clock that vibrates, that make enough noise to waken the person out of their slumber. So we have many alarm clocks going off, but clearly they are not strong enough and they are not taking enough action to move the body in order to awaken that body out of its slumber. That is what we wish to do here. And if we would work together, brothers and sisters, we could do that. But since y'all don't want to unite, and I made a video explaining why you do not want to unite with your brothers and sisters, then myself and all of us 
oh, not thus, all of us who are truly awakened. See, if you're not un uniting, if you're not seeking unification with brothers and sisters who share the same common goal and purpose of what is in the best interest of our people, then you might be awakened, but you are not fully awakened. Those who listen, those who take action upon that which I present have become fully awakened. The true 144,000 that y'all talk about in your scripture. The true awakened, the true chosen of the creation. Oh man. Woo. If it was you, then you'd be doing the work. And we'll be seeing the results. And for those of us who are awakened, we can no longer sit on the sidelines hoping because you had a little success in the past that you are going to have the same success now or in the near future. When you see that something is not going right, for some reason, we want to hold on to those things that have failed us. We become an insane people expecting a different result doing the same things. It's not going to happen. So we must change our strategy so that we don't continue to have the same results. And even if we do, then at least we know that the strategy that we use was different from what we know is a failure. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. The first, the true 144,000. Man, but that's just the first. That's just the first group to be awakened. That's a different topic. But I want to wanted to throw that out there to just to make you maybe a little curious and I always have to uh, relate back to scripture because we are a what you call a spiritual people we are religious fine so if a speaker isn't coming or quoting from these books that we love, the Holy Quran and the Bible and or whatever religious view or come, coming from some type of spiritual place, then we act like we can't comprehend anything. So that is why, the only reason why that it seems as though I speak like there is some type of religious base behind my words. But you can believe this. There is none. There will never be none. The only thing that we can do today is accept our reality. And if we accept our reality, our problems will be solved overnight. But since we believe in certain solutions, since we believe, belief is not a fact. And since what you have is not true, and many of your thoughts are fiction, have truth, fantasy, these type of solutions cannot bring answers to real problems. So that is why I have no choice but to represent real truth. And in order to communicate with the people, then we communicate them in the language that they know. You communicate with the people in that in which they know. You cannot talk about frogs with a people who have never seen a frog. So that is where I'm coming from, no more, no less. I'm not going to bring spookism here. And if anybody believes that the reality is temple, that at any time, I become, or you believe that I become too spiritual, too religious-fied, please let me know. 
We don't want to go there. There's too much. There's too much of that religious fine stuff in us that it is the number one, one of the number one causes of why we are hindered. Waiting on some spook to come out the sky, some miracle, some spaceship, something that's going to solve our problems other than ourselves. If we don't do this, it won't get done. The reason why I speak to you today, being a person who was incarcerated, is because of my actions that I'm, I am able to speak to you today. No spook, no God, no spaceship. No, no power out of the ordinary did nothing for me. I had to read and study my situation. I'm going to say it to you again. I had to study my the reality of my situation. <laughs> Woo, man, I, I don't think you heard me. I got to say it again. I had to study the reality of my situation. You did not live in ancient Egypt. You did not live and you are you have no idea of what it is to be an ancient Israelite or a Moor. That is not your reality. So if you study it other than your reality, you're not going to be able to get out of your situation. Solve your problem. And your problem is this incarceration within a society that does not love you. That does not have our interests at heart. And I'm pretty sure you will agree with me on that. This particular topic that I've chosen is very simple and hopefully within the hour I can go ahead and just run off what I would like to say the title is interesting I confess that I love me some white people <laughs> that's not coming from me that's coming from the masses of our people who are in love with the children of their oppressor. In love with the children of the people who put us in the condition that we are in. Now, we keep ourselves in the condition because they cannot stop us. And I will agree with the Sambo. I will agree with the Uncle Tom type mentality, I will, will agree with them 100% that they cannot stop us. Little do the Sambo, little do the Uncle Tom know that they are part of the problem rather than solution. Because of their slave-like mentality, they are actually hindering our greatness. You are hindering your own potential, trying not to be prejudiced, trying to make people think that you don't hate nobody. So you want to, you're going to hinder your own development so you don't hurt somebody else's feelings while they are living the good life, while you are dodging bullets in your neighborhood, while you are allowing them to teach your babies. And depend on them for jobs. And be whatever you are. They limit what you can and cannot do. This is what they want us, the Uncle Tom Sambo mentality. That's what they want us to be. They want us to continue to be in this slave-like condition. But neither the Uncle Tom, the Sambo, the handkerchief head or white folks or nobody on this planet brothers and sisters nobody can stop you from doing what you can do they did not stop the nation of Islam they did not stop Marcus Garvey 
They did not start the Black Panther Party. They tried. But basically, if you look at this history of these organizations, or even you as an individual, if you look at it, you only stopping and hindering yourself. Don't think that the CIA, FBI, is not keeping an eye on what black folks are doing. You see, and you know they are. We're trying to talk to one another, and the Caucasian people, the white folks, cannot stay away from black channels. Especially those of us of whom it seems as though our people are attracted to. Like myself, you know, I'm attractive looking brother. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not talking just physically. <laughs> oh man, speaking of that, see some of y'all black power folks, and I noticed this. We always talking black power, black power family, black this, black conscious. But you want to know something? You really don't see a lot of brothers in leadership positions that's dark skin. Because, see, what you don't want to admit it, but some of that self-hatred still is in your subconscious. A black man can't tell you nothing. Louis Farrakhan is popular, but Louis Farrakhan is a light-skinned black. Sarah so Sutton said is a light skinned black. A lot of these popular brothers, they light skinned, and you gravitate to a light skin because really deep down inside, you holler black power, black conscience, but really deep down inside, you still don't like black. A black man can't tell you nothing. Maybe that's one of the reasons why you have a problem with me. I'm too black for you. But then at the same time, you cannot limit me to some color. I'm beyond black. I'm beyond a continent called Africa. I'm beyond those things that incarcerated me by the oppressor. These descriptions were given to us as a way to incarcerate the mind. I'm a Christian. I'm a Muslim. All these titles incarcerate you, cage you up in a particular box. But as long as you come to this reality's temple, I'm going to take you out of the box. And if you become part of this movement called the reality's temple, you're going to be you. You're not going to be a clone of Talik Ibn Ra. I want you to be you. I want your thoughts. I want your ideas. I want who you are. I want, when you look out at, the, at those who belong to the reality's temple, this movement, this idea, you see different colors, different ways of thinking, but there's a common goal and a common purpose because that's what our people are. We are all different. We're never going to think the same. We're never going to be the same. And I don't want you to be the same. If everybody was the same, then there, the new ideas, new creativity cannot bloom. And if we are the catalyst, and we are, we are the catalyst of a brand new nation. We are the catalyst to bring in what the scriptures call the new heaven and earth. You cannot be a clone. You cannot be a clone. Because a clone cannot do and cannot perform what is needed in that which is new. That which is new means new ideas, new creativity. A new way of looking at things. And above all, you must accept the reality of your situation. And since y'all refuse to accept the reality of your situation and you are living in la-la land, believing you can go back to some past and become somebody of the past, that's over with. You cannot be born again. You cannot be those people. We are all different. Even those coming from the same mother are different. Even if you are a twin, you may look like your twin, but you are different. 
and religion and all these different ideas, you're making clones. And I don't want no clones here. Life is not a clone. When you look at the world, this planet and the universe, it is different. Things are constantly evolving and changing all the time. And if you reflect the creation, then you as a life form, you should change. You should evolve. And those life forms that cannot change, that cannot evolve, they go extinct. So that's the next thing you're going to have to deal with is your extinction. And maybe that's best for humanity. Maybe extinction is the best thing that can happen to human beings is extinction so the creation can start all over from scratch and bring up a life form that can get the job done that which we refuse to do or could not do. But I feel and I know that the potential for us to be all man. When you say that the black man is God, when you say that the black woman is God, how can you say that and stay in a box? God is ever creating. God is ever evolving. So how can you be a God and lack creativity and make clones of yourself? Nothing is different. Stuck in a box. What type of God is that? But I confess. Not I. But I'm talking about the masses of our people. We confess. And even those who claim black conscience. Even those who say that or they paint themselves as so, so black. Even they. You must confess that you have a love for white folks. You love something about America. You love something about this life that you're living. Yet you know that is unnatural. Let us work. Let us work somehow with the oppressor and his children. His babies. We got to. Somehow you can make it. You cannot have. Both worlds. You, you either good or you evil. There's no middle ground. There is no gray area. The gray area. Is made up. By the wicked. So, you, so they can trick you. So they can maintain. Power. What is it? Why is it that you want to live here and work with this mess? Oh, man, I don't understand you. Many, many brothers and sisters, they talk about the white man this and the white man that. But if you tell them, let us separate, they get scared. They start to withdraw. Why is that? Because you actually, you really love this situation. You're just a little bit uncomfortable. As long as you are, as long as, as long as you're comfortable, you can deal with the injustice. You can deal with the cyber bullying, the cyber murder, the real murder. You can deal with these things as long as as they don't mess with your comfort zone. But you see, separation takes us away from all those things. That's the best solution, ultimate answer. But y'all scary and you fear. And we're going to talk about that real quick. There is nothing that I like about the United States of America. Uh, there is nothing that I like about what has happened to us as a people under the control of the Caucasian people of this planet. I don't like their Burger King. I don't like their McDonald's. I don't like nothing they have done. Nothing of this world. Then some of y'all have a Christian background. And that's what makes things so bad. Many of you have a religious background. 
And there's nowhere in your religious teachings where God told his people to integrate with Pharaoh, integrate with those of whom God declared his enemy. Y'all running to Pharaoh. Y'all running to the devil, Satan. You saying, get behind me, Satan, at the same time, you inviting Satan in your house. Y'all marrying Satan. You're going to dinner with Satan. You love Satan's movies. You love Satan's McDonald's. You love Satan's Jordan shoes. There's something about this world that you love. But the end of this world is due. It's time for that world to fall. And you on a sinking ship. And if you don't get off the ship, then you sink with those. You sink with those who are doomed to sink in hellfire, the, the hells of the fire, the oceans of fire. It's allegory. Don't take it literally. Or perhaps we could. But I don't want to get spooky and I don't want to get spookified. But we do know that nations fall. There have been many great nations before the United States of America or these Europeans. Some of them, we don't, we have yet to know. They are gone. America is not so high and mighty that it cannot go down. But you don't have to go down. The reason why they are going down because of their greed, their wickedness. They're less for material wealth. They're arrogance, thinking they so much. You ever see a person that brag all the time? Then when they start losing, you see how they how they act, how they feel. Some people who brag, they mess around and commit suicide because they can't handle the pressure of losing. They can't handle the pressure of being made mockery of because. They've put themselves on such a high level. The higher you go, when you begin to fall, you got a long journey down. And the same people who you made mockery of, the same people who you stepped on, on your way down, you're going to have to face and deal with. So many of these would rather commit suicide than go through and face and deal with that type of stress. And we know how the Caucasian people of America deal with stress. The Great Depression, they began jumping out of buildings. They can't handle discomfort because they are used to exploiting others to bring them comfort. They are used to exploiting others to serve them. But that day is quickly coming to an end because Oppressed people are getting sick of it. And you should be sick of it. And that's why we're here today. Discussing how to stop being and get out of oppression. But some of this y'all love. I don't love none of it. You scared of being called a racist. You are scared of being called a hater. I hate evil. I hate oppression. I hate injustice. I hate inequality. I don't want to see nobody mistreated. I don't want to see nobody exploited. Yes, I do hate those things. And if a certain group or a certain race of people are behind that oppression, then I will open my mouth and I will call you out like you're supposed to. And if those within that group aren't like that, then they need to stand up against those in the group who are doing such, who are showing such behaviors. But don't try to trick me. Your tricks is over. Tricks are for kids. So that is why they have no choice on YouTube. No video responses, only 
false flagging, trying to silence the voice of real truth. Because they know that this is the most powerful voice on YouTube. Hey, brother, why you got to scream? It's called preaching, son. See, when people are saying something that you like, it's called preaching. But when they say something you don't like, oh, it's screaming and yelling. Y'all a bunch of hypocrites, tacky suckers. You deserve to go extinct. If it was up to me, you only have a few seconds to live. I would hope that God destroy all of us. I say that again. If it was left up to me, and there was a God, and God was asking me, what do I think he should do, or she should do, I would tell that God, destroy all of humanity, and just be done with it. Tired of messing and playing games with y'all that don't want to do right. So just wipe them out. Start over from scratch. But since that's not my reality, then I'm going to have to deal with the cards that I've been dealt. So let me, <laughs> let me go ahead and uh, get into the topic, which I am into the topic right now. Why? Why we love us some white people. And if you love some part of this world, if you don't wanna, if you wanna try to work with this world and, and, and compromise and, and whatever, I don't care how black you talk, then you love you some white folks too, because that's who created all of this mess that you wanna try to work with. That's the same as trying to go into a toilet. I'm going to go into the toilet. I'm going to put my hands in, it, in these feces. I'm going to try to grab the feces and try to make food out of it again. That's, that's the same type of thing that you're trying to do, trying to work, work it out and trying to lollygag and, and flip-flop, trying to work with this Racist white society. That's why you full of shit. <laughs> That's why you full of feces. <laughs> There's a movie. And you can do a search on YouTube and find it. It's called The Spook That Sat By The Door. And see, this is your number one problem. There's a scene where the leader of the rebellion, the insurgency, the revolution, however you want to call it. There's a scene where the leader is listening to one of those under his command. And the brother was telling the leader of the revolution why he's part of that revolution. And it's very simple. I hate Whitey. Man, I cannot stand Whitey. I hate Whitey. I hate Whitey. See, first of all, there's nothing wrong with hate. If that hate is justified, you have the right to hate anybody or anything that brings you harm. Anybody or anything that hurts you. You have the right to hate. But see, Caucasian people are tricksters, deceivers. They try to flip flop around, flip it around like you are wrong in hating those things which hurt you. But they don't have any problem with hate. Jewish people still hate, hate any Nazi 
they can get their hands on. They still hate the Libyan, even though he just died. They hate the guy they believe brought down Pan Am Flight 103, I believe. They hate O.J. Simpson. <laughs> it's all right for them to hate, but when it comes to us, those who hate us, and see, the reason why they don't want us to hate because they are the ones. Ah, I'm sorry, y'all, but woo! The religious people say you start getting the Holy Ghost. Cause uh, see, the reason why they don't want, want they don't help. Look, now I'm tongue tied. The reason why they don't want us to hate because they know they are the cause of our hurt and our pain. That's why they don't want us to hate. And then if we begin to look at them for what they are, then we'll begin to take actions to get ourselves up out of this horrid situation. Because we know that the cause of our situation was by them. And since they bring us hurt and pain, we should not expect them to help so we do know that we have to lift ourselves up by our own bootstraps. And in order to get the job done properly, then the hate that we should be directed towards them instead of, uh, of ourselves, then we should we'll turn that hate into love for your brothers and sisters and we can work as a united force against that which which cause and continue to do try to keep us in this condition. They can't stop us though, and they know it. But they are tricksters and deceivers. Because they know how to, they use their media, they use their influence to try to mess with your mind and turn and flip flop hate, make you feel guilty about hating that which brings you harm but again it's all right for them to hate and everybody else can hate but lord please y'all black folks love everybody i love you love everybody while they hate and drop bombs on people every day but this is what the intelligent true black revolutionary told to that young guy that was under his command. He told him simply, if you are here just to hate, then this revolution, you really need to quit because it's not about, see, I'm gonna say that again. It's not about hating Whitey. We know about Whitey, but it's not about the hatred of Whitey. It's about freedom, not this fake freedom, emancipation proclamation bull crap. The same type of respect, the same type of freedom that everybody else on this planet has enjoyed except us. We've, because we have been exploited, we've given comfort and the joys of freedom to others, but we have not enjoyed that freedom ourselves. It just so happened that the forces that hinder or oppress us, they are Caucasian people. They are white folks. Not all white people, but of course, they are deceivers and liars. So no matter how I say, no matter how you say, certain white people, they're going to just tell you they really mean all white people. But that just goes to show you they are liars and deceivers. And they'll, those who say that are part of the oppressors. They are the ones who are trying to keep their world alive because they benefit from us being in this place that we are. The only thing 
that the black man and woman, the descendants of slaves in America want is the same opportunities as others without being controlled, without being monitored, judged by other sickos. But as you know, since we are under the control and we are monitored by white folks, that's why your channels are being terminated. That's why you, there are certain things you can and cannot do. And you. that's why there is racial profiling. And I could go on and on. That's why black folks are 70% of the prison population. And because of unjust laws. And we all know these things. You should want to get up out of that. You should hate this condition. And you should hate anybody that is behind keeping you and putting obstacles in your way to keep you in this sad position and then they turn right around and make mockery of you and laugh at you. But if you notice, they don't laugh too much when they hear my word. They don't laugh too much when they hear some of us talk. The laughing stops. You can't handle, they can handle you if you ride in the street. Because they want a reason to kill you anyway. But they cannot handle no form of truth. A world built on lies, deceit, manipulation. That world can't stand when truth. No matter if that truth is weak or whether it is strong, sooner or later, truth will bring that world down and that's what they fear more than a nuclear bomb. And we who have these so-called black conscious, black pride type channels, we are dangerous because of our words, because our words awaken the minds of those who can change the whole entire world. It's you who are the descendants of slaves born in America. You can change the whole world, not just yourself, but you have the potential to change the entire planet, the whole entire condition of humanity. They know this, but you don't. Because you're trying to work in a toilet with feces trying to make the feces food again. When you're messing with waste, a waste product. In the game of basketball, excuse me just a second. I love basketball. I heard so-called black folks I heard that y'all like basketball too when you are playing basketball you have to have a certain type of attitude the common purpose the goal of playing basketball first of all you are on a team when you are looking for a messiah when a certain person is divine, that is not being part of a team. That's being Michael Jordan without the Bulls. That's like being LeBron James without the Miami Heat. They doing something on their own. Basketball is a team sport. Racism is a team sport. To fight racism, you must have a team. The object of the basketball team is to win a game. You are not there to lose. But of course, somebody must win, someone must lose. In this basketball game of racism, this basketball game of white supremacy, the descendants of slaves born in America, we have lost almost every game. And you should be sick of it. And when you have two teams that come on the basketball floor, you must have a certain attitude. Some people 
might view it as hate has nothing to do with hate the purpose is to win Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley I heard are best friends but Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley will tell you very quickly off the court they are friends when they get on that basketball court they become enemies and the competition is so high some people might believe that Michael hates Charles and Charles hates Michael we are playing this game to win and when we play this game you play to benefit your team you do not take a basketball and shoot in the other man's basket to score points for them so here we are brothers and sisters in this basketball game of white supremacy and many of us are so foolish we are actually taking the basketball and shooting it in the basket for the opponent I don't want you on my team but they will call you on my side because simply because you have black skin and we all know that everybody that has black skin don't give a damn about black folks we already know those with Uncle Tom mentalities those with Sambo mentalities handkerchief head we already know their purpose is to sabotage the game for the benefit of the other team but then so called black conscious so called open minded awakened blacks some of y'all are the same way and you don't even know it that's what's so sad some of y'all taking the basket and shooting it on the other side I don't I don't want you on my team you shooting the wrong basket if you cannot phantom if you cannot embrace the concept of separation then you play for the other side because there's a need for separation and we're gonna talk about that as I continue basketball is supposed to be about friendly competition that's why we can enjoy basketball when when basketball is played the way it should be and everybody respect the rules of the game you have a nice time watching or participating in basketball this basketball of white supremacy first of all you don't know the rules the white man is favorite unjust rules poor poor sportsmanship this game is not fun it is not enjoyable but if we're going to play in the game it's not about hate it's about winning to benefit your team what is wrong with black folks winning a game in the reality of the NBA white folks control that you have many black players make millions of dollars but when it's all said and done the main people that's playing this game are white folks we are the losers but yet we are the talent and, and we know this and continue to allow ourselves to be used we continue to be the white man's prostitute his man I, I got I mean it's hard to be clean because I want to express something and I, I want you <laughs> I'm just going to avoid it but y'all know what I'm talking about 
the white man's prostitute. And we just smiling because we got a million dollars? What you smiling for? Because you got a million dollars when these people are making a billion. You lost the game. There's nothing wrong, brothers and sisters, with you and I winning a game. So they are happy, and we're still complaining. They And then they make fun of us. Them negros always whining. Them negros always complaining. But see, if we learn and go ahead and play the game, if we go ahead and do what we have to do, then there will be less whining, less complaining, because... Out of that billion, we'll have half of it or almost all of it because we are the talent. But we're not making proper choices and accepting responsibility for ourselves. So I will agree with the Sambos and the Uncle Tom and Tyler. I do agree with you that we need to accept responsibility and make proper choices, but the Sambos and the Uncle Toms don't want to do it. They want to continue to keep the enemy, the oppressor, on top. While you, you and I still get the crumbs. Because they don't want to offend nobody. So they rich while you suffering and poor. And we are the we are the we are the target of their jokes and their mockery. But if we took what we earning. They wouldn't be laughing. It is hypocritical. Excuse me again. It is hypocritical. And I want to talk to brothers and sisters. See, there's there's all kinds of level. There's all kinds of level of symbolism or what you call Uncle Tomism. I know what Uncle Tom really means. But since the majority of us, we use that uh, description in a certain way. So I'm going to say that so you understand where I'm coming from. Hanker, handkerchief headism. Dark Europeanism. Dark-skinned folks with the minds of white folks, the oppressor. Oreo cookieism, however you want to call it. I want to talk specifically to y'all with that type of mentality. And unfortunately, even some of y'all that talk all that black stuff, you are dark European yourself. Because you you scared, you scared to and don't want to even. Think about the concept of separation. So something about this situation, something about this world that you love. But I want to show you how hypocritical you are. It is hypocritical to tell your children about they should grow up, get out of your house, be independent. Be your own person. Make proper choices and set responsibility. All that old garbage y'all always talk about all the time. What you say out of your mouth, but you're not practicing it because while you, you tell your children that and you'll come to me with that silly stuff telling me the same thing, but you don't practice it yourself. While you land your butt in the house of a people who don't, that you have to beg that you got to scratch where you don't itch. Book shuffle. You got to be careful what you say. Because you don't want to be racist. You don't want to be seen as prejudiced. So you got to keep all, all your hurt deep inside. Until you meet a black man. Then you'll go off on a black man. But while you're in front of white folks or, or anybody else. You going to scratch and itch and Buck shuffle and yazzas. Uh, I didn't mean it that way, sir. So I ain't racist. I don't care what these people think about me. They hear what they want to hear. So I don't care about 
their judgment, what they say, what you do. You gonna tell somebody to accept responsibility and make proper choice. How is it a proper choice? Trying to work within a system that don't that is against you. That was made and designed to be against you. How is that a proper choice? Begging folks, every time you turn around, there's some type of injustice. You living under stress. How is it a proper choice to purposely live in a stressful situation? You are doing yourself a disservice. And your babies and future generations have the right and should have the opportunity to express themselves without these obstacles. They have a right to show that they can be independent from white folks or anybody and do their own thing. They have that right. That's proper choice. That's accepting responsibility. What's more responsible than creating your own world, your own nation, your own laws, your own government, your own educational system, your own language? What's more responsible than that? They're sitting around here begging somebody. I got the vote to get this right. Make your own rights. Do your own thing. You don't have to worry about begging and getting somebody else permission to do anything in your own house. At the same time, y'all hypocrites, you will tell somebody who, who is in a, an abusive relationship, you should get out of it. Separate yourself. If you don't like your job, something on your job is not right. Quit your job. Go somewhere else where you can get more money and be treated better. Reject food that make you sick. You don't have to eat food that make you sick. You can reject it. Separate yourself. Separate yourself from abuse. Separate yourself from a bad job. Separate yourself from food that makes you sick. Don't run to a dog that's trying to bite you. Run our way. But here you are, because you're a hypocrite and because you're a coward, you want to stay with the people who mistreat you, who have made you insane. That's insanity. Because you enjoy the abuse. You eat food that make you sick. You stay and handle the stress of being on a bad job. You run to the dog that want to bite you. You sick and you insane and you don't even see it. Because you're so in love with this world that has treated you so bad. Post-traumatic syndrome. What is that illness that they give women who begin to love the abuse? You are mentally ill and you sick. That's why you can't that's why you don't understand myself or anybody else that talk like me because you sick. You think I'm sick. You are the one that's sick. Because I'm not going to stay in, a, in an abusive relationship. I'm not going to scratch where I don't itch. I can talk free. I don't worry about uh, what if somebody going to get offended and blah, blah, blah. I do respect people. I don't want to say things disrespectful, but I'm going to tell the truth. I don't want to call nobody out of, out of their name. I don't want to be infantile and childish. But I'm going to speak the, the real truth. Got to do that. I have to do that. Because I have accepted responsibility. And I have made proper choices. You want your children to stay in an environment where they can't be who they are. And whatever they do, some sucker going to steal it from them. They don't even get the credit. Here we are living a nation. You know that rap music, we know for a fact that rap music came from inner city youth, black youth. The 
the youth of descendants of slaves. But these other suckers are trying to lay claim to it. And if nobody was really around, they would steal it and you know it. This is not the type of environment. You do not raise your children among, among enemies. You've never seen a rabbit that had babies among wolves. You don't see uh, 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 antelope that have babies around cheetahs. But we're the only people that will sit around and have babies and give our babies to those who don't like us. And sit around and go to church every Sunday and pray to some mystery God, oh, things going to get better. Have they gotten better? 400 some years? I was watching Kuta Kente. And Kuta Kente was praying to Allah. Laying in his own feces and urine in that slave ship. Allah never helped Kuta Kente. Didn't do nothing for him. Where are these gods at? You live in a nation that don't like you, and you know they don't. Not all, but you see how we are treated in this on this soil. They exploit us and they make mockery of us. You do know they, they do it in the public. Then they turn around. I'm sorry. These people, they meant what they said. They ain't sorry. They sorry they got caught. And some of them don't even care that they, that they, they were caught. And then you can't even imagine what they say about black folks behind closed doors. I don't have to imagine. I already know. But it's always shocking to those who don't want to believe. I can't believe they hate us like that. I can't believe because you want to be lovey dubby. You you want to there's something about this place that you love. I want to bring this talk to conclusion. And I want to say this. Brothers and sisters, the best solution is separation. Separation has nothing to do with hate. Separation is needed so that you can be the best person that you can be. And you cannot be the best person that you can be under these type of circumstances. And I will guarantee you. If the white man, let me let me say this now, and y'all listen to me. I can guarantee you, if the white man thought that we were really serious about creating a nation of our own and separating away from them, if they thought that we as a people were serious, you will see a change in them. Because they know our value. You don't know your value. They know. They know what your potential is. And you will see them begin to respect you and treat you like we should have been treated a long time ago. If we made proper choices and accepted responsibility for those choices. Instead of being scary, buck shuffling, flea scratching Negroes. Buck shuffling and how they do these Negroes. You must begin to act differently. You must begin to take these, these drastic measures. It must be done for the sake of future generations. They don't deserve to be hindered and messed up like we are. You know we messed up. We are messed up mentally. 
even physically because now we are filled with cancers. We're sick. We're stressed out. And, it's, and all this is due to living in this society that is detrimental to our well-being. And it does not have our interest at heart. Our future generations, your baby, your children deserve better. They have the right and we should give them the right and the chance to be all they can be, not in the white man's army. In their own army, under their own law, under their own government, judging themselves instead of always in some white man's court. A bunch of white folks and some other suckers always judging us, telling us what we can and cannot do based on their sickness. Because all these suckers, all these ticks, all these fleas that's around us, sucking our blood, all of them are sick. And they have made us sick. But now, justice has come. And justice determined that we who are the descendant of slaves, a change needs and is coming and has come. And the first step to that change is making us accept our reality, accept our situation, study our situation. And when you study the reality of your situation, you can get free like it's almost overnight. I can bear witness because I did it in my own personal self without the help of any God or any other power except me. You are power also. Stop degrading yourself. Stop demeaning yourself. You are power. You are wisdom. You are might. If you are a child of God, then you are God. Express yourself. But you cannot express yourself being a clone waiting on somebody divine to guide you. Those who become part of this movement called the Reality Temple, we all are leaders. Everybody with a specific power. Like Thor is the, the god of thunder. And another god might be of water. So all of us are gods, but we all have special powers. But as long as we focus on a common goal, have that purpose, all that direct all that power in one direction, we will be a successful people. And I want to say this in conclusion, brothers and sisters. You don't need Egypt. It's nice to know that we come from a intelligent, successful people, Egyptians. Or we are part of the ancient Israelites or Black Moors. That's beautiful and wonderful. I don't even want to argue and debate with you about those things. But you don't have to talk about the past like that. Brothers and sisters, study American history. Look what a slave did. Look what a slave done and accomplished under oppression in America. You should be so proud of who you are and what you know that you are. Ain't nothing wrong with being the child, the descendant of slaves born in America. Our people, powerful, intelligent, they are great. Oh man, I'm, I don't need Egypt. It's good to know we related. But I love George Washington Carver, Benjamin Banneker, Nat Turner, all those brothers and sisters born and did incredible things. George Washington Carver. Look our people up. Charles Drew. Christmas Addicts. Christmas Addicts was the first black man, the first one to die in the white man's revolutionary war. 
Look at all the things that we've done. Why you got to go to Egypt? Why you got to go 2,000, 3,000 years ago when you are power right here? So if you separate from that which brought you down, can you imagine what you can accomplish without this stress, without this oppression on your head? Can you imagine? Then you don't have to talk about God. You will be God. And you will be respected as a God. You don't know how great you are. Your greatness. And then, unlike the gods of this world. Who are greedy. Filled with lust. Who are sick. Because they seek material wealth. Selfish. You don't, you and I won't be like them. We will share our godhood. We will share our power with the rest of the human family. We will bring peace and love and, and health to the earth and the animal life. And we will leave this planet and seek the same out in this vast universe. In other words, wherever we may go. Because almost anything is possible in this reality. But we won't know that it's real until we make it real and make it solid. No more fiction. No more fantasy. These people on this planet have a slave master mentality. They built a world due to a due to greed, a lust for material things. They have a sickness. They want to be served. That's why they have exploited folks all over the planet for hundreds of years. But their day is over. Their day has come. And now it is time, justice is here, and it is time now for us to rise. For the cream, forced to the bottom, always rise to the top. And we are that cream. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, we are the cream of the planet Earth. You force cream down, but it always rises back to the top. So with that, thank you for listening. And I hope that you view separation as our savior, not as something demonic or something that is wrong. It is the best thing we could do for ourselves and for our future generations. Has nothing to do with hate, but it has a lot to do with putting ourselves in a position so that we can be the best that we can be without going <laughs> into the army or the marines <laughs> Woo! thank you for listening brothers and sisters families and friends and associates and even enemies because i know you you've been listening to me and i will even tell my enemies you know if you listen to what i'm saying you know that what i'm saying is right and actually this is beneficial for everybody involved no doubt then you don't have to worry about making fun. Black folks do this and black folks do that. We'll be doing exactly what you claim you want us to do. Independent. Respectful. Intelligent. All that will come about. But it can't. And that process is hindered. Staying in a house where we are not loved. Where our best interest is, is not at heart. Where we are exploited. That can't happen. And these Uncle Toms and Sambo, you should be shaming of yourself. Dooming your babies to the same stressful life that you really don't want no part of. And you know ain't right. You should be shaming of yourself. But you are scary. And you fake and you hypocrite. And you are not a friend to black folks, the descendants of slaves in America. And you're not a friend to white folks either because you want to keep this lie going because you're a coward.
Let us stop being cowardly, brothers and sisters. Let us deal with our reality. Let us think for ourselves. Let us be rational. Let us use common sense. Let us be brave. And let us get this job done for our sakes and for the, for the sake of our babies. Thank you for listening. This is your brother, the mighty Angel Snow Number 7. Peace forever. Peace forever and always. And respect you. And I'm already 5,000.